When you think about air pollution, you likely imagine smog over a busy city. But what most people don't realise is just how bad indoor air pollution can be. Studies have shown that levels of carbon dioxide, volatile organic compounds and particulate matter can be up to five times higher indoors than outdoors. So whether you're in the office, at home or even in the supermarket, you could be breathing in toxic air without even knowing it. To mark Clean Air Day, ventilation systems company New Air have lent me this handheld roaming air quality monitor so we can find out just how clean our indoor air really is in comparison to busy central London. So it has different sections at the top here that sense different pollutants. This one, as you can tell, is sensing for carbon dioxide, um, while the other two sense for particulate matter and volatile organic compounds. So it takes about three minutes to calibrate and then we'll get a reading of what the carbon dioxide levels are like here in Piccadilly Circus. Piccadilly Circus has been a busy traffic interchange since it was built in 1819 and is one of the top tourist destinations in the capital. With all of that in mind, we expected the air quality readings to be high and were shocked by what we discovered. In particular, CO2 levels of 537 parts per million were very low at the Piccadilly Circus, falling at the lower end of the recommended levels. Our first stop for indoor air quality testing was the large open plan mail online office in Kensington. The levels of CO2, PM2.5, which is the tiny particles in the air that can cause it to appear hazy, and PM10, which is the particle matter inhalable into the lungs, were all well within the recommended levels for indoor air. In fact, the CO2 levels we recorded in the office were the lowest of all the sites tested at 579 parts per million. However, levels of VOCs in the office were significantly higher than recommended. VOCs are emitted as gases from products like cleaning supplies and office equipment like copiers and printers. Chemicals can also linger in the air from deodorants, hairsprays and perfumes, which could explain the high levels here. In 2017, researchers from London Metropolitan University tested just how dirty the lines of the London Underground are, with the Victoria Line coming out on top, followed by the Circle and Piccadilly lines. Our tests revealed the CO2 levels on the tube were significantly higher than inside our office, clocking in at 835 parts per million, which is towards the higher end of the recommended limit. The PM2.5 and PM10 levels were also high in the underground, the highest of all the sites tested, which, given the limited ventilation on the tube, is somewhat unsurprising. The basement of a busy McDonald's in the heart of London didn't bring much joy either. Here, CO2 levels came in at a staggering 1,329 parts per million, more than twice as high as Piccadilly Circus, and the kind of levels that can cause people to start feeling drowsy. While many of us enjoy heading to the pub to relax and unwind, our readings may put you off. We sat at the back of a busy Weatherspoons on Shaftesbury Avenue to discover CO2 levels almost as high as in McDonald's, again surpassing recommended levels. VOC levels were the highest in Weatherspoons of all the sites tested, and more than seven times higher than in Piccadilly Circus. And finally, a Sainsbury's local in central London, where we were pleasantly surprised to find CO2 levels at 702 parts per million, well within the recommended range, 